I've just, yeah, I've, I've just started, well, I haven't started playing around with it yet, but I've just got a headset recently from um, the people at Gravity Sketch. I think it's the second time I mentioned it now, so shout out to them. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I, oh, fuck, I just hope I've got enough time to, to spend with it. But I'm very, um, I'm very intrigued to, to, to have a go, especially now with like the, the new um, Oculus, the Oculus Quest, um the 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 headset is just it's a lot less fussy than what it was like you know a couple of years ago you know there's no wires they've got cameras on the front now as well so you've got you can have like this augmented um situation and you don't even really need a computer because it uses like an online computing yeah. power so um this is this is really interesting. Oh, and there's no fucking you don't have any uh like locate like towers or anything that you need to set up easy. So either. So that's um yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, actually. At Design Shorts, um I have a friend Tom. Uh he was the VR guy at Design Shorts, for example, and I tried I had chance to try this um headsets thanks to him a couple times with the wire or without the wire, the one you mentioned. And even Gravity Sketch also contacted me one year ago. We talked, but we couldn't go on because, again, I didn't have time to learn it. I would like to, but I, yeah, I unfortunately couldn't. But it seems, yeah, this technology is getting better and better in a fast way, and I'm sure there will be better use of it. But maybe not yet. Maybe not for everyone yet. But it's promising, definitely. It's very promising, yeah. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how th how things unfold, you know, especially when you when you look into s situations where you know people can meet together and in a in a room and look at a a model, you know, where everybody's in different parts of the world. And I mean, it's technically yeah. it's possible now, obviously, but I think, as you say, it still needs a bit of time to 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 develop. But very exciting, nonetheless. Yeah, a couple of years ago. When I tried a bit older versions, it gave me this sickness feel. Um, I don't know what it's called, like this. You feel like sick, sick. Yeah. You wanna vomit yeah, and yeah, these yeah. kind of things. Now I know that it's better. It's they, they get made it better, but still I'm a bit afraid to have this feeling again. First of all, and secondly, I'm hoping. I heard that, like Blender will have VR uh, part soon, kind of like a. I don't know exactly, but if. VR will be effectively working with Blender somehow. I mean, if Blender has this, uh, I don't know, version, I think I will be more interested in, you know, just to use my Blender knowledge, also put it in VR, it will be easier. Rather than learning a new software or anything, uh, I can just get a headset and use Blender the way I know it would be easier for me. But I thought they already have that. I'm not totally sure, honestly. Like this part of it, I, I'm I'm not much in knowledge, let's say. Um, but what I knew last time when I checked, it was like under development still. So I don't know until which level they have it. Burke, how is um how is the the uh, how are your courses going? Is that is that working out? Um, it's it's good. I mean. Uh, the reason I started the courses was also the YouTube channel. Um, as I said, in 2013, 14, 15, whatever, in this era, the it was different social media. And I learned a lot. Like people were direct, people had time to answer you. It was also new for them. Again, as I said, like great designers like Arthur, Sasha, everyone, they were answering you with proper feedback. So because in Turkey, we didn't have car design education. We still don't have car design education. And uh, it was difficult to learn, but thanks to these people, I was able to learn. And after that time, uh, after I, I'm, I'm definitely not like the best designer or some, because when I first started YouTube, some people told me like, oh, it's how, how dare you? Like, who are you to make a video? Who are you to teach? And I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm not teaching you. You don't need to watch or learn from me. It doesn't matter. Or I'm not teaching to a professional car designer about how to sketch, of course. Uh, it's not about this. But I know there's a guy in Turkey, in India, in other countries that who wants to learn this stuff and they don't have access to this material. So I wanted to kind of give back like what I had, like because I'm very thankful to online stuff, 
to improve myself. And still today, like even about Blender or anything, I, I just check every day a tutorial for sure on YouTube or a course. I buy courses. It's very great opportunity what we have. And I just wanted to give it back. And also, again, as I said, I was interested in the business side, doing my own business. So I wanted to combine these two. I mean, that's why the I have YouTube for free, but courses are not yeah, for free yeah, because... Yeah. At the end, you spend a lot of time to build of this course. stuff. You need to learn how to record yourself, how to edit this video, how to create the content, like how to do all this stuff. So buying fancy if you spend lenses. all your time, you need to take back from you, thanks to you, your advice. <laughs> so all this stuff, like really you need to, like it's two-sided thing. Like I started first with very basic sketching. Uh for example, Leandro sketch it. He, he was probably the oldest person, I mean, longest person doing this uh, online car design tutorials, as I know. And he's doing a great job, of course. But I didn't want to do like second Leandro, you know, I didn't want to do what he does. So I created first this reference pack thing because I knew the first, like when people send me their sketches, it was like, how is it? And the first thing I say, perspective and proportion. Generally, these two are wrong and difficult to understand. But I know it very well because I had the same feedback when I was uh, in university. Like some people were telling me, take care of the proportions. And I was like, what do you even mean? Yeah, what like, does that mean? How can I take care of it? What is proportions? Yeah, it's super abstract, actually. It's like, okay, the stance of the car. But obviously, I don't see that. So I sketch wrong or I sketch a weak car. So after time and experience, because it happens by time, really, understanding these proportions and the stands and this kind of things take time and a lot of interaction with other designers and feedback. So after years of learning this until some level, I said, okay, there's somebody worse than me that can learn this stuff easier than me. Like they don't need to wait that many years. I can give them a template pack so they can use it as a reference and by practicing it, your hand gets used to it, then you don't even need these references. You can just keep on sketching. So it was the first thing I created, the course, let's say. And then the second one was Photoshop, Photoshop course, because again, people spend hours on Photoshop or they struggle a lot or some render seems like very fake. And I just wanted to show my quick technique, like how I use and in my in eight hour, I think I show eight different style of sketching in Photoshop. Because I love shortcuts and I love, I, maybe it's because of, I don't know, I don't want to spend too long time in one idea because people have a lot of ideas and I just want to put them out as soon as possible. Especially again, as I'm interested in social media, you cannot put your professional work there. I cannot put anything I do for my clients, but still I want to put something. So I want to do something quick. So this styles developed this way and I just wanted to share this with other people. And at the end, the Blender was my, best course in my opinion uh, because now it's in a different level like uh, on the blender course finally there are at the beginning i told you that i was not teaching to professional designers because they all know sketching they all know photoshop but blender is super new and it's talked it's people talking about it a lot it's great benefits and professional designers who don't have time to scroll youtube for months they just want to focus on car design. And I did that course and there are professional car designers that I talk and they enjoy the course, they learn the course. And that made me like, wow, it's like, I wasn't expecting that much. Like another professional is learning from my course. It made me feel really like, okay, I'm doing something helpful to people. Uh, it's, it's, it's great, great feeling. So yeah, the courses are doing well, but due to this freelance projects at the moment, I'm not super active anymore. But still, if anybody of my students have questions, they just ask me and I answer them all, of course. Dude, it's it's uh, th that was a really good perspective for you to have in the beginning. I mean, I had I had that as well. I think like before I put out um, the first podcast, I kind of I had a moment where I kind of like freaked out a little bit, and I was like, "Fuck!" Like all these people are gonna see it, and and what are like these big fancy directors gonna think, and all this stuff. And then in the end, I had that fucking, I had that moment. Sorry, I just need to try and fix this light. I had that moment of realization as well, yeah. where I was just like, you know what? It's not for those guys. 
It's for the kid in Africa. It's for the kid in India. It's for the kid in Turkey. It's for even the kid in Germany that just doesn't have access to to any of this information, you know. And I also thought like, you know, there, there, there are... Um, you know, you might see the odd marketing video on online of some like fancy design director, but there wasn't anything where people were just having normal conversations where you kind of got to see a little bit behind the curtain. And I just, in the end, I had to focus on, you know, those kids that just want to know a little bit more and are just tired of all the bullshit, you know? And, um, and then I also just, I, I had to just get over the fact that, you know, if... I, I'm gonna make a fucking arsehole of myself. I'm gonna say stupid things, and I've got to get comfortable with that, you know. And it's gonna suck in the beginning, and hopefully, you know, it's something that I'm gonna get better at. So I think, um, yeah, I th- I, it's sometimes it's um, it's it's good to it's good to have that perspective, you know, just to think about like, you know, well, who is gonna get something out of this? Yeah, that's, I totally agree, man. I mean, by the way, you are doing great, amazing job. I mean, what you do is totally another level because you bring people that's really difficult to reach out. And for example, me being here, I feel very honored and special because uh, compared to your uh, guests and other episodes that I'm always inspired and being here is great, by the way. Um, About this topic, um, first of all, yeah, people who don't like you or who don't like your work, they will not watch it anyway. <laughs> like uh, that also really with me. This approach really with me. I was like, okay, uh, I will like ah, another story. Like I can quickly say, uh, I made a video on YouTube. It was about don't do this mistake while sketching cars. And I was talking about some air intakes, but I was talking about super basic level. And uh, it was for like very obvious mistake. And Sasha wrote me on Instagram. I saw his comment. It was like, it's totally wrong. I was like, I wrote to Sasha Drake, like, hey, I, I mean, I know it's not covering the whole topic, but it's only for the most surface part. He was still not convinced. Uh, for him, it was like, if you want to teach something, you should teach it 100% and deep and like with the details and stuff. And to me, not because if you put like a super detailed, all the knowledge, um, it's maybe overwhelming for many beginners. You know, for beginners, you should start slower. You should first show the obvious mistakes yeah. and then go step by step. And I, at the end, I'm not doing this tutorial for an amazing designers like Sasha. I, I'm doing it for beginner level. So that relieved me. And also, I have I heard that some people, even I know, talked behind me like, oh, he couldn't make it as a car designer. He quit and he's now doing YouTube stuff. He's trying to like be popular it's definitely not like that i don't give a damn about this people's opinion you know i care about other people who says man thanks to your course i can do this now thanks to your course i got um approved from this school now i'm doing car design i studied or again as i said even professional designers now telling me like yeah it, man, it's, it was great now i can build the volume in a very quick way in 3d it's, it's just amazing i focus on more this positive side otherwise you wouldn't put any single post or video to social yeah. media. It's it's crazy cruel. Dude, I also I also I I agree with your sentiments as well. It's it's um with regard to you know bombarding people with too much information. Like I think that's I, I think that's inaccurate. You know, if you if you are going if you are for example being hired uh, to go into a company and teach a, a room of professionals. And, and they want to know about advanced shit like that. Okay, that is a different, it's a completely different story. But, you know, there's so many, there's so many kids or, 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 or adults or whoever that can't, that need to go, they want to go from zero to one. And there is such a fucking yep. gap over there with regard to what we do, you know. And, it, and, 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 and with regard to the teaching, you know, it stops a lot of people from doing it because they think like this. They think like, oh, shit, well, I need to create a whole university curriculum. And it's like, no, it could be something as simple as yeah. like, how can I set up the proportions of a car, you know, or, or in this case, you know, you talked about this air intake. I saw that post, by the way, and I, I, I you know, I understand what he's saying, but at the same time, 
I, you know what you know what you said is is correct you know you are you're pointing out an obvious mistake to a beginner you know think a little bit about what it is that you're putting into your car because you are referring to some um a novice that is putting air intakes all over the place and is not really thinking about you know the the what they're actually putting into the the exterior so i think like you know the the um yeah and 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 alias alias is also you know on the subject of 3d modeling stuff you know i, I you 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 there is there's a lot more information now but i mean like you know before if you typed in alias tutorial you would you would see like a four hour video by some Russian geezer showing you how to do the perfect A pillar blend, and like by A class standards. And it's like, dude, that's great, you know. But what about the person that just wants to know, like, how can I quickly throw a volume together, you know? Because there's va- there's real value in that, and there's maybe like. I don't know, five people on the planet that want to fucking sit through four hours of like, how do I create a perfect A pillar? You know? <laughs> so I, I yeah, you, you, you've got, you've got, you've got the right attitude, Burke. And I, th- I think, um, yeah, I, I take my hat off to you. And I think, you know, also back to, you know, the, the, um, I don't know, the guests, people that I speak to in general, um, you know, I also get like quite, I've had quite a few requests, like, you know, um uh to 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 do the podcast and they've they've like fir- immediately start firing off their cv it's like i design this i design that i design this i design this and it's like great dude thank you now fuck off please because i don't I've, like i don't care you know <laughs> and it's like it's not all about that you know it's like yes there are like big names that have got these great, interesting backstories that I really want to talk to. And those, you know, we can all learn from them. And it's an absolute honor to sit down with somebody like Anders Warming or Ian Cartabiano or whoever and say like, you know, tell me a little bit about like how you got to where you are, you know, or somebody like Prata Bose, you know, who was like, you know, came from very kind of uh, humble, modest beginnings. And he's gone on to like, you know, the, absolute pinnacle of 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 the of his career so um you know those are really interesting stories but i also want to like talk to people on the shop floor so to speak and also um you know somebody like yourself is also very interesting to talk to because you are trying all these other things as well that you know adds a lot of value to somebody that maybe doesn't want to go and spend 25 years working for Volkswagen, you know, or any other OEM for that matter. I mean, need to be careful what I say about them, but, um, you know, it, like, or any, any, any car company for that matter, you know? So I think like we, we're living in this age now where there's all these, um, there's all these opportunities and I kind of want to speak to people on the, you know, that are trying things on the fringes of that as well. You know, one of my earliest guests was um, Florian Weber from uh, Paper Legend, you know, and I was like, who, where else are we going to be able to speak to somebody that's just done a crowdfunding campaign and is starting his own business with like paper fold like origami cars you know this is a really interesting thing so it's not all about like you know i design this and i design that so yeah you bring a lot you add a lot of value burke definitely thanks thanks a lot man it's it's really great to hear it from you and i want to point also one more thing on this like on the beginner level it's I think I would teach better than somebody who has 30 years experience because when you are that much experienced, you forget the beginner mistakes. Like it's learning how to drive a car from a beginner versus a Formula One driver because this person, for him, everything is already like natural, already like reflexes. But for somebody new like me, like I was, I I still consider myself kind of young and like Five, seven years ago, I was still a student, so I still struggled with things, and it's not that old. I remember the mistakes. I remember the struggle. So I can point out easily what they might be struggling at rather than saying something advanced and confusing them. I know the exact problem, and I can answer easier. It's like being advan- having the advantage of uh, being not that expert yet on many things. 
And on the other part, as you mentioned, like I want to talk about also the other aspects of design, other fields that they can go because car design is super high competition. Like there are many things going on, and it's a child childhood dream for many of us. And when you come to that point, like in Italian design, I started to question. I was like, okay, my childhood dream was being an exterior car designer. Now that's what I do. I do it professionally for different brands, different projects. But is that it? Like I grow up now. Do I have new dreams, or still should I stick to my childhood dream and do it until I die? Like should it be? Should I follow my childhood dream? And I realize it's changing. Like when you, I don't know, grow up, when you become adult, or like every year, even still now, your goals, your dreams actually change if you just focus on yourself. If you think again, but if you don't question yourself, you are like, okay, that was my dream. I'm a car designer. Yeah, I have my salary. Everything is fine. I mean, I'm not saying it for everyone. I mean, it, not everyone has to be like like me or somebody else. But it was not my dream anymore. That's what I realized. And I jump into this freelance. I did different things, and I want to talk about this to new uh, younger people because they act like if I cannot be a car designer, it's the end of the world. It's not. There are way many things. Like there are different fields that you can still interact with car design. You can do. A lot of things, and we need people on these fields. It's not like everywhere is high competition. Some parts, like I don't know, even UX UI design for cars, car industry, it's still there. Are a lot of people need it, or different type of software, VR, for example. Still, there's not enough people. Like we don't have time to learn, for example, and there we need people to do it for us, right? So there are many different aspects that they can approach to car design or industrial design, transportation design. So yeah, these are interesting topics that I want to evolve also to my own YouTube channel a little bit to this later. It's well, I, 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 it's 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 it's, it's super. It's it's very important that you talk about those things because I think like you you can sometimes get caught up in what like you know you might have said to all your friends oh well I want to be a car designer or I wanted to be a fucking ballerina or whatever it is. And you might like start on that path and, and, and get there or halfway through you do change your mind and you have a right to change your mind. You have a right to be a different person that you were five minutes ago. You know, there, there's no, there's, there, there's no law to say that you can never change your mind. You know, you grow. It's, it's, it's part of being a human being. It's part of evolu uh, yeah, evolution. And, um, and I, I, I think, yeah, you know, totally it agree. also, it, it, it comes, it comes down to self-awareness, you know, like questioning, like, is this really what I want? You know, is this, um, it's like, you know, great. I've, I've, I've achieved this and I've got to this stage and do I want to go, you know, to the next level? Yes. Okay. Carry on. But if you're not, if not, then it's totally okay to pick something else. You know, it's, it's, um, and you shouldn't feel the need to fucking have to explain it to everybody, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's, I think one of the reasons people don't even question themselves anymore. It's first of all, comfy. Like when you, get the job and after a couple of years you have your contract and everything you you still some people still complain about their job even if they're car designers but they don't care about changing it because they don't question if they like it or not anymore it's like yeah it was my dream i'm a car designer what else that's life uh, for some people it works very well for some it's not but uh, i think in our world today like in the past it was more difficult to change the field because you learn it only in the university or by experience. And after 10 years of experience, you don't want to start from zero. But today it's not like that. Today you can just learn any skill you want as we like, that's what we are doing. We are sharing everything. And online you can learn many things. You can change your field. You can change totally your life and all your approach. Like when I started this YouTube channel, learning video editing was, I was editing my first videos in Blender. What? <laughs> because there was like a video editing section there. Yeah, it was just crazy. I, I was super shy on camera. I couldn't record myself. Jesus. I was just recording microphone and my sketch time lapse. And uh, even microphone, I was super shy. I was like, um, my, I'm not confident with my English that much. Like sometimes I don't understand. Or I repeat myself a lot with some words or I don't have that much rich vocabulary and whatever. Um, so I was like very shy at the beginning. But then you learn. You learn how to speak. You learn how to 
have a camera like I learned from you which lens have this nice effect on the background now like this blurred stuff going on like we learn from each other everything and this learning new stuff was very exciting for me rather than repeating yeah. doing the same thing okay you sketch another idea but you still sketch okay I know how to sketch I want to learn something else now using how to how to use camera how to record a course how to di- build different things it's for me, it's super exciting to just improve. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, it's there's there's so many different things to learn, and um, there is, um, you know, one of the I there's one of the one of the there's many. I mean, nobody's really worked it out completely, but you know, when on the pursuit of happiness, they say the key to happiness is progress. And I think that that's something that comes, you know, progress is something that you get out of learning, you know, or pushing yourself to try things that you haven't done before. And there's so much value in that, you know, and, and um, I'm full of music analogies and, and uh, there's a very famous blues guitarist, B.B. King, um, that said, I'm pretty sure it was B.B. King. And he said, you know, the, the, the great thing about learning something, learning a new skill, is that nobody can take it away from you. No one can take it away from yeah. you. And there's a, there's, a, there's a, you know, there's an immense amount of, there's immense amount of value in that. Yeah, definitely. And it's like realizing yourself and building another like building another version of yourself, like getting updates, like back 2.1 and next year 2.2 updated version because new goals, new skills, there are different things to learn. And when you learn more, you realize you need to learn even more. Like YouTube algorithm, for example, something crazy. Like I go to, I have different YouTube channels for different reasons. Like uh, not only for creating content, but also using the algorithm in my advantage. Like on my main channel, I see mostly car design, your podcast, Frank Stephenson, like car design related st- stuff, or maybe YouTube or social media stuff. On my second channel, I have like a workout stuff. It's a secret channel that I don't publish, but I always search workout stuff. So when I want to work out, I switch the YouTube channel. Ah, so the algorithm okay. shows me a okay. different version of my. Yeah. You know this home page request re- recommendations so like if if i need to see something technology i have like three channels and on the third one if i need to upgrade something or learn something about technology i i search it there so it goes on this track so i create my different versions on let's say youtube algorithm and uh, i was planning to connect this to something you said ah, about happiness uh, it's another topic i want to talk because this is yeah definitely one way a very important way of inner happiness what you mentioned and another one another reason that I quit my job was being a car designer like you are very limited like you have okay where you want to work you don't pick the country or the city you pick the studio wherever is the studio whoever accepts you because it's, it's like that and you just go there and work like if you go in the middle of nowhere in a village but if there's a nice design studio you just go and work there there's no other way but I have I have my girlfriend from Poland and uh, she was in Poland. I was in Austria and it sucks. Like distance relationship is super stupid. And we needed a solution for that. But she works there. I work in Austria. How to do that? So at the end, as I already always had this idea in my mind, I decided to quit to go to Poland. And that comes back to our beginning of the conversation. Like that's why I love it to be like in Turkey and then go to Poland whenever I want. I'm not requested by company or by my boss to be in the studio or in this particular location whenever they want i decided myself and it's also super happiness like freedom freedom is really important happiness for me i was just um i was just speaking to a friend of mine yesterday who was a he was a very pretty successful interior designer and he kind of went off and did his own thing and um and he also he you know he also valued the whole um, stability that a permanent job offers you. You know he he came he came from a pretty uh, a pretty tough background and um, you know he worked his ass off and made many sacrifices to get through university and and get his um, 
you know, his permanent job and whatnot. And, you know, he's done a lot of cool stuff, you know, worked on a lot of cool projects uh, with a lot of cool people and for all, for all intents and purposes had a, a dream job. But, you know, he did that for um, a period of time and, um, you know, he had, he had a sabbatical and some time away from, from, from his job and then realized, actually, I, you know, I, I don't, want to do this anymore and I know that it's risky doing something on my own um but I want to give this a go you know and if I don't do it now I'm never going to do it but the point is that he had this realization that actually I'm not happy doing this anymore you know it was great for for a certain period of time and I'm grateful for it it's not that he was not grateful um but he you know he 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 realized that he wasn't happy doing that. So he tried something else. And, you know, it's, it's to go back to what your, uh, what your brother was saying with regard to being a business owner, you know, he, um, you know, you, without doing anything stupid, you know, you take as many precautions as you can. But, you know, amazing things happen when you have a vision and you dedicate your energy to that vision, you know, rather than somebody else's vision. And all of us are like, it, you know, it's not necessarily going to happen overnight, but, you know, the, eventually lots of little efforts of um, energy that you put into your pursuit, they compound, you know, you get momentum and then all of a sudden, you know, money starts coming in, clients start coming in and it has a snowball effect, you know, and, you um, and and of course you know now and, and after after a period of time you get to the point where you're like fuck i've financially actually i'm better off than what i was before or i'm earning the same amount of money but i've got full jurisdiction over my time i can be wherever i want and i don't have to fucking listen to anybody you know um so, you know, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of value in that. And it, and it also, you know, it also goes back to, you know, the, the, um, you know, people that are, are, are in the system and they, they've, they've, they've got the, they've got their permanent job. They've got their first promotion, maybe second promotion. They've got that company car and, uh, and they themselves can't see how fucking miserable they are, you know. And I, I, a full disclaimer here: I'm not saying that everybody in that in the system or uh, with with that is miserable. But the point to what I'm trying to say here is that you need to be objective with yourself and think like: Is this really what I want? And if it is, great. But if it if it's not. Well, you've got more opportunity now to make those make those changes than there ever has been, you know. So, um, listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's it's like I totally agree all you said, and um, to me also another motivation was not regretting in future, you know, because every time you look back, some I mean, everybody probably has something like. If I did it last year, if I st like if I started working out last year and do it consistently for one year, now I would be like in a great shape. Or if I started save money like five years ago, if I bought Bitcoin or whatever, like if I did something in the past, it would be amazing. And you regret a little bit to not regret like after 30 years in your life, like, OK, I was doing, I mean, again, not everybody has to be like that, of course. But to me, I realized that. I want to try something and if I don't try it in future, I will just regret it. So rather than regretting, just do it. And what can be the worst thing? When you really think about what can be the worst thing, it's not that bad, actually. Like you don't die at the end when you think like the worst thing, I quit my job and somebody will kill me because if I quit my, it's not like this. Or I will stay hungry, I will be poor and I will sleep in the park. It's not that bad what will happen. You are not that it's not that big risk, you know. It, in worst case, you can find another job, maybe not that good, but you can still climb the steps you did before. You made it before, you can do it again. So this regret part was a good motivation for me. And on the other hand, about these people you mentioned, like when you have good salary, when you have good position, when you have the company car, it's difficult to also like take risk, right? Probably it's more comfy and it's probably even more difficult for them, but still... If you are complaining about the situation, you have to take the risk. It was my advantage. I was at the beginning of my career and I was like, 
okay, it's like now it's easier. It's time to try. I don't have kids, or I don't. I mean, I know you have kids, but I, I didn't have any responsibility. You know, it's it was even easier for me. When you go longer in your life, when you have different things in your life, it's getting even more and more difficult, probably, to uh, take the risk for other people you are responsible for. Uh, yeah. But still, it's worth to worth to do it. But I think, but but that's Realize also yourself. That's also a valuable point that you said is that you know you you made it before you can make it again. And I think that the other the the other uh, precursor to that or the other. Um, uh, point to that is as well that you know generally people and the corporations pe managers hiring people within these corporations are a lot more open-minded to situations like this now you know if you go if you go to if you go and apply for a job after trying something and it not working out you know more often than not you're going to be a lot more interesting of a person to speak to then to somebody that's never tried anything before. So they go, okay, well, you know, he tried this or she tried that and it didn't work out, but they fucking did it. You know, they gave this thing up, they tried something different and they realized actually, you know, they like this, what we have. And, um, and there's a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, people are a lot more open-minded to that sort of thing now. So I think, um, PR, we should not, necessarily be so quick to to yeah, think to think that you know once you leave it's game over you know forever i think there are even people i know like in some companies they quit their job they go try different things they do their own freelance works and it doesn't work they're not happy and they go back to their job again and they accept them because they you are an active person you are pushing for your limits it's not bad for the company who will hire you anyway they know that you are somebody who takes action. You are not somebody passive, like, okay, yes. give me my salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be like, uh, do my, you know. So it's always, I, I don't think there is any uh, bad part of, I mean, of course, it's definitely high pressure. It's, um, you know, when you do your own thing, it, you work way more than um, you would do in a job, maybe. But yeah, it's, it's not for everyone. I mean, everybody is different, but... Um, it's definitely not bad to try it. I, I agree with you. Being active is always a good thing in everybody's eye. Like even your courage, your, you are being brave. It's already important that when you are talking with a manager, like they know you, you will take the risk. If there's a decision also about a project, you will push your idea, which will maybe benefit the company. You will not be okay with, like you will not be just a follower. You can maybe lead a project in a way different direction. It's also... Important. Yeah, absolutely, dude. I mean, corporations hire people that have like former business owners all the time, you know, like successful or unex unsuccessful for those very things, you know, because they really understand the concept of ownership, you know, or, or of, of driving something forward, you know, getting people motivated or pushing an idea or a product or whatever. Those are, those are things that, um, you know, are, are, are real, like, so hard lessons that you learn when you stand on your own two feet and you you try something on your own and by the way as well i think it's what's also what's also important here on the subject of 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 non-regret is the fact that like if you if you go and you try something and it doesn't work out and you then decide okay fuck i, I you know I, I realize that that's maybe not for me i want to go back and you know have a you know, the security of a nine to five, you are going to go back to that security of a nine to five with real, um, with a completely different perspective, with the perspective of, I really, really value this. You know, this is going to, this is, I know exactly what I've got in front of me and I'm going to cherish it and I'm going to just hold on to it, you know, and I'm going to, and you are going to be a way more happy person because of that, you know, because you've, 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 you've tried this and you realize it didn't work and now you've got this thing in front of you and you know that actually this is the thing that you really want because now you know. So there's a lot to be said for that, Burke, a lot. Yeah, definitely. And like we talked with you before about Gary Vee yeah. and uh, like he's a super honest person about all these topics and he 
also have also many great points. One of them is like people live for other people's thoughts and many people are afraid, as you said, about what others will think. Like if you sell your car to chase your dream, people might say, oh, poor guy, he quit his job and he doesn't earn anything. He had to even sell his car or like, oh, he couldn't make it in car design. He starts now YouTube in my case. Like he tries to do something on YouTube, the poor guy, or I don't know, like you change your house or whatever. And if you live like this, if you live to satisfy other people first, you will never satisfy everybody 100%. There will be always comments. Uh, so there's no reason to be scared of. And just following your own passion. And your, if you know really your inner happiness is more important than what other people think, it changes all your approach. You just start to don't give a damn about anybody. And it really helps a lot. Yeah, like absolutely. I wanted to say a couple more things to connect this, but I don't remember. <laughs> no, it's okay. I have the same problem. My brain is fried and I, I always, I lose myself. And I'm, it's amazing that those two rants came to some sort of point because I, I normally lose it. So mm -hmm. yeah, don't yeah, worry remember, about it. But I remembered, by the way. Tell it me. Was about, <laughs> it was about, it was not only about the financial part or something, but also like in car design. I also got asked many times, like, which car did you design? Like, it doesn't exist oh, yeah. anymore, which car you yeah. designed anymore. But people people ask, like, uh, you say you are a car designer, but which car you designed? Like, it doesn't work like that. You were part of the team for many things. And, like, quitting job before saying, like, I was the lead designer of this car doesn't mean that you are unsuccessful or something like it's very rare now to say like I was the lead designer or my key sketch became to this product that you can see on the street. So for many, at least what I experienced, what I saw on other friends, colleagues was that was the goal. Like they were chasing this dream, but yeah, it's, you don't have to care about the answer that you will give to other people. That's where I was planning to connect to this topic. Yeah, it's very true. And I think that that's also, you know, hopefully something that comes with age as well where you re where you get to the point where you genuinely go don't really care what you think or what you think you just you you know you have to i think also be i don't know having i mean getting older but also i don't know maybe having kids as well you or a family where you realize you just don't have time and energy to to worry about what other people think you know be, um yeah so there you go Burke, listen, I, 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 we should probably wrap this up, but um, before I go, um, or before you go, um, I maybe you don't have anything to say about this, but I wanted to ask you, are you doing any like NFT stuff at all? Have you looked into that? I was very interested in like a couple months ago when it was like super popular, when everybody started talking about it. I was like, wow, what is it? Then I checked like, yeah, it sounds cool. But, um, you know, I, I needed some kind of invitation. Uh, I didn't even know the exact technology behind or I, I don't know much about this part. But I was interested and I checked. I needed an invitation. I didn't chase it much. I didn't want to ask. I, I asked Scott, Scott Robertson, actually, because he did an NFT. And he said, you need an invitation from the website that you will upload or from somebody else that who has... I don't know, kind of like uh, storage for invitations, whatever. So I couldn't make it. And I was also not sure if I make an NFT, who would buy it? I mean, I was not sure. So I didn't try. I was, I don't know. I don't have deep knowledge um, on this. But I, I haven't done anything. I'm very, very interested in it though. Um, but I, um, yeah, I mean, again, Gary's got some great videos on it, and um, but and he's got some great advice on it as well. You know, there was there was a moment there. Pro there is still a lot of uh, like you know scamming and and people just wanting to make a quick buck, and you know just and and also guys, mm -hmm. that, people that have got quite big audiences have just gone like, okay, well, I'm just gonna you know unload shit and hopefully my audience is gonna buy it, but. Um, he he's done you know he's 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 done like a really thoughtful a, a, a numerous thoughtful projects and um you know all co all connected with the with the smart contracts connected to whatever nft you're buying so it's not just 
an image or a sound bite, whatever the case is. You know, there's actually something in the mm-hmm. smart contract like, you know, spending two hours with him or having access to a conference or something like that. And and this is so, this is something that's gonna happen, you know, more and more in the future. And more companies are gonna like, you know, th- there's there's no end of examples, but like, you know, for example, concert tickets will be NFTs in the future. You know, your cinema tickets would also be that. And um, I, I like, you know, at one stage I was, I was really excited and hyper to just, you know, put something out. And then, um, yeah, I, and then now I'm kind of like just soaking it all in and, and, and processing it because there's so, ma- there's so many different things mm-hmm. that you can do. And also, you know, that whatever bullshit you put out, that's going to be on the blockchain. You know, it's going to be there like you know forever so if you sell something to somebody and Mm -hmm. some poor bastard spends like you know 10 grand on a on a shitty drawing that is worth nothing because in the future well you know you're going to be the dickhead that was responsible for that you know and some people are okay with that but um i just think it requires a bit of thoughtfulness so yeah exactly like as I see, there are two types of people about this NFT topic. One is like me, who doesn't know that much. And the second is more like you, who knows deeper about it. And if I, for example, put something out, I felt like first I need to understand more about it. And I don't know that much about it. So yeah. I don't know who would buy anything I produce and why. Like, why would somebody pay 10 grand to anything I created digitally? You know, I know like, there are may, way many, many more things going on the background of it, but... First, I need to digest this information to make being able to sell anything to someone. And I realized like I wouldn't, I mean, nobody would buy it anyway. And I just mentioned Scott Robertson, for example. By the way, he's, you know, he's again the god of all this. Uh, shout out, shout out. And online teaching stuff. Shout obviously. out to Scott. Definitely. <laughs> and uh, like he made NFT, and I, I don't know how many, but he sold at least one of them I saw. And it's a whole different thing because what he did, or he, he even sold one of his old works, but he, it has the history, it has all the experience, like it has a lot of more meanings than what uh, most of the people put out there, as you said, like some very easy Blender model. I see a lot of Blender simple animations, like, you know, the satisfying animations, a line going like this, the circle jumps at this easy things that you can find on YouTube how to do like in 10 minutes. but it was interesting for other people and people were buying it. And also the buyers, there are two types, as I see. One is more like they know what they do. They are investing in it or or buying it for the art itself. And some other people are like, ah, NFT, something cool. This is cheap. I can buy it. And they just buy it without knowing it. And yeah, I'm neither of them yet. And I don't know how it will grow into different levels, but yeah, it definitely has great potential. It's interesting topic. That I need to do more research about. Yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff in the future. I think guys like da- like Daniel Simon, for example, as well. Like you know, he that's a guy that um, he probably just doesn't have the time to do it if he's not doing it already. But you know, can you like he could literally do like a a virtual like baseball cards of all his different vehicles, for example. You know, and. Uh, yeah, and he's got no yeah. end of no end of material for stuff like that. You know, there, there's um, and Scott's yeah, obvious, that's yeah, definitely yeah. right. Well, it's really interesting because like I, I buy Hot Wheels. Yeah, I know I interrupt you because of the connection difference, but I will quickly say one more thing, like about NFTs and stuff, like about Daniel Simon. I bought his books in Turkey. It was not available, but I brought it from like from Amazon America, United States, and it took couple of weeks to arrive, but I was pe- impatiently waiting for it. I bought even the Cosmic Motors t-shirt. I have some, a lot of Hot Wheels also, like I just showed today on my YouTube, like McLaren P1 from Scott Robertson and everything. I have like 400 Hot Wheel cars, by the way. So I don't know why I'm collecting it. Like when we go to a shop with my girlfriend, I'm like, hey, can I, I will just quickly check Hot Wheels, okay? She's like, okay, but he doesn't. Un- she doesn't understand. She's like, why, even why do you have enough? Even I don't know why I'm doing it, but it's super emotional for me. And NFTs might be the same. When you said Daniel Simon would do an NFT, I'm like, I mean, I would be interested yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if yeah. I would buy it, but I understand what is it exactly. I would be like, 
because you are a fan of this person yeah. and yeah. you want to have something, a connection with this person. I mean, yeah, it's another level. Dude, it is literally like, it's exactly that. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like a, yeah, it's, it's, uh, then yeah they, they, it's an it's an emotional connection that you will have to a product a brand a person and um yeah and in the future you know you will have like these you'll have a public wallet that everybody will be able to see and it will be like um mm -hmm. you know people will be able to see oh well burke's got you know this vehicle from daniel simon and he's got um i don't know like his race the race ticket for uh mm -hmm. that he you know that he went to at silverstone or you know whatever the case is you know or this this concert ticket and um yeah so it's uh i also you know i feel i i should probably keep quiet because i don't know what i'm talking about but it's a very interesting subject very very interesting yeah definitely no you know a lot about it as i see <laughs> Well, I know. I mean, I've, 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 I'm listening, but I mean, I, I, I don't have some big grand master plan. You know, I had to, I had to, um, I also had to uh, like to understand the whole metaverse thing. Like it was something that I didn't get at all. And I, I went like, I was like, I understand the concept of virtual reality. I understand the concept of, um, you know, meeting other people online and whatnot. But I was like, I still couldn't quite get my head around, um, why somebody would buy like digital real estate for example and i was I, like yeah. and i like one of my downfalls i it's probably a positive thing as well depending on how you look at it but i'm not really into science fiction at all in terms of watching stuff so i like i've I haven't fucking watched Star Wars. I must be the one person on the planet who hasn't watched it. But I did watch, but I have to say I watched, I watched Tron and I really enjoyed it, you know, and, uh, um, but I went there because I was, a, you know, a fan of Daniels and the vehicle and whatever the case is. But it turned out I had a pretty cool storyline and I was able to absorb it. I just struggled to get into that, that mindset. But the point to this conversation is uh, um, that, I wanted to understand the whole concept of like, you know, digital real estate, for example, you know, how is that going to work? And, you know, what might things look like in 20 years time or 30 years time? And uh, somebody recommended uh, watching Ready Player One. And I like it kind of, it helped me understand. I know it's not the best film in the world, but it kind of helped me understand the mindsets a little bit. And, um, yeah, which again is like, yeah, it's, 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 things are going to be very interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would talk more about it to different parts, but I know you want to kind of close this. No, I mean, you can, no, dude, you simply. can, you, you can, if you've got something, you, you can carry on if you want. Yeah, I, I was just planning like to say, even the normal conventional art, like, I don't know when was it this couple of years ago this banana taped and sold for I don't know a couple hundred K US yes. dollar or something. Like why would somebody do that? Might be also another reason to buy digital real estate. I mean some people are using it as an investment, not for the sake of what is it exactly, but to sell it later or even maybe money laundry, money washing, what is it called? In yes, English? money laundry. Even for this kind yeah, of yeah. reasons they might use yeah, for NFTs also is good way to I think uh, do that. I heard, but again, I don't know much about. It. I think like the, it makes total sense, but the thing is, you need to kind of understand that world in order to work out like you know what would a good investment look like, you know? Because if you talk about the metaverse, it's like, well, which metaverse is it? You know, is it? Is it? I mean, I don't even know. I I know of Decentraland, for example, but I don't know. I, and there's there's various ones so it's like you know i it's easy to kind of get my head around the whole concept of like um uh video games and why why it's um why it would be valuable to advertise in a video game because millions of people are playing that game for example and if it's a car game for example you know that's 
and and you've got graphics down the side of a car that's worth something i can understand that but then if you talk about digital real estate like is it um you know you you've got to first understand like you know okay which which decent which which metaverse is going to be something that everybody's going to use and and then it's working out within that metaverse like what is the popular area you know what is the main street what is a shitty street and um it's all speculation at this stage you know like it's it is a it, it, it's all a gamble but it's trying to work out like you know what's what's less to how to mitigate that risk yeah but at the same time like i mean all you said is definitely but when you said about advertisement i thought like this real estate thing i saw it on social media like again months ago that's one digital real estate sold as nft for this much of money so i think this story already is like a great advertisement because now anybody who listened this type to google like the real estate nft probably they will see certain company or a name and it's already great advertisement maybe that was also the reason like to do the first crazy thing and you will have the legendary story so people will know about you <laughs> or something i don't know i mean i i just for for me i was trying to understand like how how these yeah how, what, what was this metaverse look like you know is it like are we literally all you know is is there's literally going to be like you know this alternative universe that we are going to really sp- are, like how much time are we really going to spend time in in it you know are we going to um i mean it turns out probably quite a lot you know it's all it, it all depends on uh, like personal preference or whatever the case is but i just you know that that's quite a good film actually to kind of um ready player one to kind of understand like mm-hmm. what does it mean to exist in an environment like that you know it's uh, yeah i don't know um mm-hmm. it's it's a very expansive topic but no, yeah definitely. yeah Anyway, Burke, listen, I'm going to wrap up. It was good talking to you. It was, I, I'm glad that we were kind of able to navigate this dodgy internet connection that uh, delay between us, but it seemed to have got better the second half. And I think we did pretty fucking well. Yeah, it was. It's just great because I think you're a great host. I was also talking this with Ankur. Like, you know how to direct the conversation you know like you already planned something but you are great also spontaneously so it's it's just amazing you are definitely able to handle even the bad internet connection and it was great to talk with you as always like we were always talking on instagram but talking here being on your podcast is really amazing for me i think the first one was ender's warming episode that i watched or the ellen ellen throws there but it was already like super inspiring all of them and I cannot catch up with all your episodes yet because especially this last couple months were super busy, but I love what you do, man. It's just keep it up, please, for all of us. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it.